from around the globe. In sold out arenas and humble churches. From out on the streets. To your screen. And now, the time and what must be done. On this edition of Farrakhan Speaks. Greetings to you. I am Minister Louis Farrakhan, the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere and to the aboriginal people of the earth. The eternal leader of the nation of Islam and a warner to the government and people of the United States of America and to the nations of the earth. I'm grateful to Almighty God Allah for this opportunity to be with you once again on this broadcast. I thank the Twitter Army and our social media friends for their great work in promoting and encouraging dialogue about the subjects we discuss each week. I thank the ministers, laborers, and followers who continue to engage the public in a beautiful manner. And although I promised in my last broadcast to talk about who made the promise to the children of Israel of a promised land and where is that land that the children of Israel were promised. What America and the world is agonizing over at this moment has caused me to change my subject matter. Although, inshallah, I will try to answer the questions that I raised before the end of this broadcast. So our subject today on the 34th edition of the time and what must be done is America's errant foreign policy. What is the definition of errant? It means deviation from the regular or proper course, erring, straying. Erring means going astray, being in error or wrong. In previous broadcasts of the time and what must be done in particular, part 13 and 14, we shared and recounted America's misadventures and interventions in the affairs of other nations seeking to murder or overthrow the leaders of those countries and replace them with leaders who were willing to do America's bidding. The United States Secretary of State, John Kerry, on this past Monday, August the 26th, held a press briefing in which he announced the Obama administration's conclusion and determination that the Syrian government used chemical weapons on innocent people. Based on America's history of false flag operations, great doubt exists as to the truth of whether the Syrian government is in fact responsible for the use of chemical weapons or is America responsible through the use of her proxies. What would Syria have to gain by using chemical weapons to cause America to intervene militarily in her country as she is experiencing this terrible civil war. I think it is America and Europe 
that are tired of the civil war going on so long without definitive results in the favor of the West and Israel. So it is today as it was with America's client state, Iraq and Saddam Hussein, in his war against Ayatollah or Imam Khomeini and Iran. America did not want Iran to be the victor in that war. America said a victory for Iran was totally unacceptable. So America turned a blind eye to Saddam Hussein's use of chemical weapons that America supplied him. Not only killing soldiers, but innocent people for the benefit of others. America never raised a cry then about the use of these heinous weapons because a victory for Iraq would be in the West's favor by destroying Iran. And a victory for Bashar al-Assad against all that America is doing against him would not be in America's favor or in the favor of Israel. So military intervention by America and a coalition of the willing to accomplish your objectives would be in your favor. And now that England has backed out and some of the coalition are not so willing, is it ego that's driving you to go it alone? Is it that you will be embarrassed if Assad stays in power? I wonder. An article from Russian TV news entitled Selective Obscenity, U.S. Checkered Record on Chemical Weapons reports on the history of America's record on the use of chemical weapons. In part, it reads, from 1962 to 1971, the U.S. military sprayed an estimated 20 million gallons of defoliants and herbicides over Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia in a bid to deprive the Viet Cong of food and the natural cover of the jungles. The Vietnamese government estimates that 400,000 people were killed or maimed and 500,000 children born with birth defects as a result of the so-called rainbow herbicides. A similar legacy was left by the deployment of white phosphorus and depleted uranium following the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. In August the 25th, uh, 2013 Global Research article by David Swanson, Mr. Swanson interestingly entitles his writing lying about Syria and the lying liars who lie about lying. Listen to what he had to say. U.S. prepares for possible retaliatory strike against Syria in a Los Angeles Times headline. In the article by Mr. Swanson, it reads, quote, threatening to attack Syria and moving ships into position to do it are significant, illegal, and immoral actions. So states the writer of the article. The president can claim not to have decided to push the button, but he can't pretend that all the preparations to do so just happen like the weather. According to the UN Charter, it reads, quote, all members 
shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state or in any other manner inconsistent with the purposes of the United Nations. The UN Charter, like the American Constitution, is gradually being ripped to shreds so that there is no more international law and order, just the law and order of the powerful against the weak, both in the world and now in the United States of America. This article provides 10 reasons why America should not attack Syria. You can find the article available to you on our website, www.noi.org, at the time and what must be done. Mr. Swanson sums up his 10 points in this way. He writes, but guess what? The evidence suggests strongly that the latest chemical weapons claims are as phony as all the previous ones. Global Research News reported in an article June 15, 2013, about a deleted British Daily Mail online article titled, U.S. Backed Plan for Chemical Weapon Attack in Syria to be Blamed on Assad. What did the British Daily Mail online article of January 29th say? Leaked emails, according to the Daily Mail, have allegedly proved that the White House gave the green light to chemical weapons attack in Syria that could be blamed on the Assad regime and in turn spur international military action in the devastated country. A report released on Monday, January 28, 2013, contains an email exchange between two senior officials at British-based contractor Britam Defense, where a scheme approved by Washington is outlined explaining that Qatar would fund rebel forces in Syria to use chemical weapons. Now, Barack Obama made it clear to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in December of 2012 that the U.S. would not tolerate Syria using chemical weapons against its own people. Let me read this email that we have gotten from that newspaper. It's from David Goulding, and it's to Philip Doughty. It reads, Phil, we've got a new offer. It's about Syria again. Qataris propose an attractive deal and swear that the idea is approved by Washington. We'll have to deliver a CW, chemical weapon, to whom? A Soviet origin G shell from Libya, similar to those that Assad should have. They want us to deploy our Ukrainian personnel that should speak Russian and make a video record. Frankly, I don't think it's a good idea, but the sums proposed are enormous. Your opinion? Kind regards, David. The British Daily Mail online article continues, the United States State Department had not returned a request for comment on the alleged emails 
to mail online today at the time of publication as i heard this on the news it occurred to me when the first report came of the use of chemical weapons that the rebels and the west were losing the war to take bashar al assad out of power and to destroy his regime so the introduction of chemical weapons would force president obama to do what he threatened assad that he would do if such weapons were used but there was such an outcry israel who is not a dispassionate observer of this are the ones that gave intelligence to the united states according to the british guardian news israel told america that it was assad's regime that was doing this but the evidence was so overwhelming that it was in fact a lie so that charge went unanswered and the president was spared having to answer for his statement of crossing the red line by the use of chemical weapons now months later it comes up again more devastating than the first time and israel again points the finger at the assad regime and even though weapons inspectors are there as this broadcast is being made from the united nations secretary general ban ki moon said he was not there to decide who did it but if chemical weapons were in fact used so the secretary general opens a door and america says regardless we have the facts we know it was assad so we're going ahead to punish him so after the first alleged use of chemical weapons the us administration decided as a response to step up the type of weapons that they were giving to the rebels which means america was already arming the syrian rebels this was not a civil war in which the people inside syria were rising against their government alone no they were rising but they were rising against their government with great help from the outside so now we learn that fighters from all over the middle east are now in syria armed by america through her proxies in qatar and the united emirates and other states here you will see a map of syria i want you to look uh here you see uh red pyramids that represent gas fields and green pyramids that represent oil fields and there is a line going from uh Iraq all the way to the Mediterranean Sea now according to an article from readers supported news by Mr Carl Gibson on June 18 2013 We gleaned from his article that the Kirkuk Benayes pipeline, also known as Iraq Turkey crude oil pipeline, was first brought online in 1952. It runs 600 miles from Kirkuk in northern Iraq to the Syrian town of Benayes on the Mediterranean Sea between Turkey and Lebanon. It was Iraq's largest crude oil export line until US forces inadvertently destroyed it in 2003. Since then, they have tried to repair it, but it has not been able to operate at full capacity until America controls that area 
and opens up that pipeline, the major oil companies are not able to get full value out of all the blood and the money they spent to invade Iraq. Syria has at least two and a half billion barrels of oil in its fields, making it the next largest Middle Eastern oil producer after Iraq and new gas fields have recently been found, making it all the more desirable to the Western powers. So it is more than Assad being a cruel leader and a dictator that caused America to want him out. In my broadcast on the lie and the liar, parts 25 and 26 of the time and what must be done these lies and half-truths spread by the Zionist control media are purposely spread to infect the minds of the people and the peoples of the world that we should think along the lines of the mischief makers and the bloodshedders in furtherance of their wicked objectives. The government of America and its leadership is taking America and the world on a very dangerous course. And I would not be a good student of my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as a warner from Allah, God, and not raise my voice in harmony with his to warn President Obama and this administration, as well as the Congress of the United States, of the danger of the course that America is embarking on. As we pointed out in a former broadcast, according to General Wesley Clark, he said that 10 years before 9-11, Paul Wolfowitz, the neoconservative architect of Bush's war on Iraq, told General Clark of their plans to clean out the Middle East and take over those Muslim regimes. Just days after 9-11, General Wesley Clark said he was shown a Pentagon memo that describes how the neoconservatives in and out of government planned to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and lastly, Iran. Five years and seven countries. This was being planned to ensure that the control of the riches of that area would always be available to America and her allies. It has been revealed by journalist and historian F. William Engdahl that the ultimate goal of the United States is to take the resources of Africa and the Middle East under military control in order to block economic growth in China and Russia, thus taking the whole of Eurasia under control, blocking another country's ability for economic growth is an act of war. They want the vast wealth and they want to militarize the oil sources in such places as Libya and the so-called Republic of South Sudan that are directly strategic to China's future economic growth, says Professor Engdahl. This is all about controlling Eurasia, something Zbigniew Brzezinski talked about back in 1997 in his famous book, The Grand Chessboard, American Primacy 
and its geo strategic imperatives the results are already there in egypt and tunisia the democracy has already produced a weak economy while libya the country with the highest living standards in all of africa before the nato bombings today is in ruins he goes on in his article the africom the pentagon's africa command is coordinating the scene mr engdahl says mentioning that in, interestingly enough africom was created just after 2006 china's africa diplomacy when 40 heads of african nations were invited to beijing and enormous deals were signed on oil exploration building hospitals and infrastructure anything the imf did not do in africa over the last 30 years for the gods of money of wall street the only chance of survival and keeping the dollar now is finding new areas of loot the arab spring is directed at grabbing and privatizing the vast wealth of the arab world Engdahl warns that the United States is building more and more bases around the world, like 17 new, mostly Air Force bases in Afghanistan to be ready for the new war with China and probably Russia. The so-called Arab Spring didn't start in the Muslim world, but from plans in the United States of America to take over the Middle East and its natural resources for the Western world. But this Arab Spring is not going the way they originally intended, and it's creating more hatred of America and her foreign policies. America, even though you plan well, there's another planner over and above your plans that is the best of planners and your plans under his plan is causing you to fulfill the scripture that says you will lay a trap and get caught in it and you will dig a ditch for others but you will fall in it yourself this shows that america doesn't really care about democracy if that democracy brings into power people that she does not want that will not be amenable to her foreign policy objectives and her national interest as a result of such planning based on warmongering the CIA, the NSA, and the government of the United States of America would engage covertly in creating and exploiting differences that naturally exist in all nations and put money behind these differences that would one day explode into possible civil war, fratricidal conflict, death and destruction based on the lies of the mischief making of this mischief maker and universal bloodshedder. Every time there has been a so-called democratic election in the Muslim world that brought so-called Islamists into political power, America worked to destroy that democratically elected government, which shows America's not interested in a democratically elected government that produces a government that she's not in control of and cannot have free access to the natural resources of that nation. For instance, Hugo Chavez, 
is not a muslim he was socialist in orientation a man coming from the masses of the people of venezuela his ideas were not in harmony with america's foreign policy objectives for venezuela as well as central and south america his influence with the oil money that he had as the eighth largest exporter of oil in the world with the largest oil reserves on the planet would give him the power to influence the political and social dynamic and direction of central and south america so in the eyes of america he had to be overthrown although he was democratically elected under george w bush after hugo chavez had won a democratic election forces were set in motion among those who felt threatened by his economic policies and he was overthrown condoleezza rice our then secretary of state applauded his overthrow but within days he was put back into power by the rising of the mass poor of venezuela america's foreign policy objectives were the same in algeria tunisia in iraq in afghanistan in pakistan everywhere america felt they needed regime change they already hand picked persons that they felt would be amenable to america's foreign policies and objectives surrounding their natural resources in algeria in 1992 islamist forces rose to power through a democratic election and the military rose up and overturned that election and america's hand was involved in libya muammar gaddafi no matter what the world thought of him was moving his country and africa forward libya had as a nation no debt how could this leader with a philosophy that was not liked by the western powers guide a nation to be absolutely debt free yet building the economy of that nation and at the same time helping africa to come up out of the ashes of colonialism and neo colonialism Gaddafi was overthrown but in overthrowing him america did not count on islamic forces coming up that america had no control over so now libya is a lawless country that is in ruin and this has brought blow back to america that america did not expect so america lost an ambassador america lost americans in the bombing of the embassy in benghazi this should have been taken as a sign to you america wise men heed signs but it is only the foolish who are blinded by their desires who are heedless to signs that was a sign of what america and europe can expect with its meddling in the internal affairs of the middle east africa and other nations of the world let's take a look at egypt in egypt the desired results from these maniacal actions that are going on as we speak are proving every day to be more and more uncontrolled and consternation is ever increasing which will lead to more and more errors america thought Mubarak would be there for as long as the military were able to keep him in power but an uprising came and Mubarak was overthrown then you had your people america that you wanted after Mubarak so that your political and economic control over egypt would remain but 
a democratic election was held. And out of that, your shock and awe was that the Muslim Brotherhood came to political power, not with a gun, but on the basis of a popular election by the people. But the moment President Morsi of the Muslim Brotherhood was elected, the army seized power from him that he would be a naked president. Under America's tutelage, the army acted with America's backing that Morsi would be in office with no power to execute good on behalf of the Egyptian people from his mind and from his heart. Morsi was sworn in on the 30th of June, 2012, as Egypt's first democratically elected president. But before President Morsi took the oath of office as the first democratically elected president of Egypt, the Supreme Council of Armed Forces, who were in power after Mubarak's ouster, amended the Constitution of Egypt, restricting the newly elected president's powers. Well, Mr. Morsi had to get back his constitutional powers. So when Morsi took back the powers of the presidency, the Constituent Assembly drafted a new constitution that was put to a popular vote. And the people of Egypt supported that constitution democratically. President Morsi had parliamentary elections and there he won again in a democratic process. But America didn't applaud it. America being upset with the direction and fearing what that direction might lead to engaged forces in Egypt that tapped into the dissatisfaction that naturally exists in every nation to create more dissatisfaction, putting tens of thousands of people in the streets against President Morsi. So again, the army was encouraged to perform a coup. America now is trying to tip through the tulips by not calling it a coup, while Senator John McCain went over to Egypt and inadvertently said, it was a coup. Well, if it was a coup, then you're going to have to skip around your law that says you should not give aid to those who are involved in a coup. So look at how you stretch the English language to not call it a coup, even though that's exactly what it was. And it was a coup of America's and the Western world's and Israel's making. So now it's a very confused scene in Egypt. Members of the Muslim Brotherhood are not lying down because they were robbed of their democratically attained position of power with America's help and with Europe's help, and they know it. So the hatred of America is building in Egypt, and they see the hand of Israel over all of it. In Turkey, when Nekmetin Erbakan became prime minister, being an Islamist, he was moving Turkey more toward the Islamic world than toward NATO and Europe. He was democratically elected by the president, by the people, pardon me, of Turkey, but militarily overthrown. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the current prime minister of Turkey, was a member of Erbakan's party and one of his supporters. So Egypt now and its condition is threatening to embroil the whole Arab and Muslim world. And the ousted former President Mubarak has been freed 
at a time when there is so much confusion in Egypt. Mohammed al Baradai, who served as director of the International Atomic Energy Agency, a good man, but your man. But he was not your man to the degree that he would remain as vice president and see the people who were democratically elected being slaughtered by the military with American weapons. So he resigned and the confusion continues to mount. In the meantime, you want Bashar al-Assad out. What did he do to you? Nothing. What did he do? He was a friend of Russia, but not necessarily yours. He would work with you, America, if you respected the sovereignty of his country. So you wanted Assad gone. Evidently, he's been a thorn in your side. Israel bombed him twice recently, and Israel bombed Iraq first, and their nuclear facility, because Israel does not want any Arab nation to have nuclear power. After Iraq had developed with the help of the French a nuclear facility, Israel bombed and destroyed it. Where was the outcry? Did America say, Israel, you were wrong for doing that? No. Israel is your companion in wickedness. So you both are headed downward into the bottomless pit of hell. You expected Assad to be gone, but he's still there. You said he should step down, but he didn't step down, and the rebellion became a civil war from an uprising. And you influenced Qatar, you influenced Saudi Arabia, you influenced the Arab Emirates, you influenced others to send fighters into Syria to get him out of power, but evidently they all are failing. That's a Syrian problem that should have been handled by the Syrian people, but you intervened, America, the mischief maker, the blood shedder, the liar. So now, America, you back your proxies with weapons that you sold to the Middle Eastern countries. Well, I ask, is it in serious interest to push America into war with Syria? I don't think so. So may I respectfully say, Mr. President, your advisors don't seem to be your friends. Who advised you to say that the NSA was not spying on the common American citizen and in less than a month it has been revealed that they were in fact doing the very thing that you said to the American people that they were not doing. Who advised you to say that there was no such thing as UFOs and then a few weeks later, it was admitted by the CIA that Area 51 in Roswell, Nevada is in fact a reality. What are they doing to you, Mr. President? In a few broadcasts from now, we'll deal with Roswell and Area 51 if it is the will of Allah. Mr. President, they're destroying you little by little so that you become involved in the spider web of their lies and treachery, so that when in two years from now your presidency is over, what can you do with the remainder of your life after they have destroyed your potential for good? So now, since the president is not acting as his advisors and the neoconservatives want him to act, they inspired the rebels to use some form of gas. And immediately, the propaganda machine of the Zionist-controlled media goes into action to feed the American people the same kind of propaganda that led to America's involvement in Iraq and in Afghanistan. So the media is quick to say, Assad, 
is killing his own people. You show these horrific pictures of dead men, women, and children, no doubt gassed, but who is at the root of it? Oh, you warmongers, let me hasten to tell you that you're getting yourself into a war that you would wish that you had never gotten into. You that love war, you will be forced to eat from the plate that you have delighted in serving to others. Well, here we are again, just as in Iraq, just as in Afghanistan, just as in Libya, the liars and their lies are now spreading to justify what America's policy has already been developed to do to Assad and Syria. So you want to tip the balance by using the very weapon that you say Assad is using. You inspire others to use it to justify pulling Obama and America into war. Did you think that you would do this and Russia would be quiet? She's already warned that if you do this, there would be catastrophic results if you bomb Syria. But you are blinded. You think you are more powerful than you are. So if you allow these liars, deceivers, and warmongers who lied to get America into war in Iraq to lie to you, Mr. President, again to get involved in Syria when this explodes beyond anything that you have imagined. Who will you blame for that? I know that you only want to do a limited bombing to punish Assad. That's what you say, that's what you think, but what will be the result after you do it? You'll be sending tomahawk and patriot missiles, but what will be the result after that? Yes, well this is how the West throughout history has done. You draw up borders throughout the aboriginal world and brothers end up fighting brothers over the question of who owns the land. The same in Syria, the same in Iraq, but the very division that you are inspiring for others is coming home to roost right here in America. What about Iran and the exposed plots of Israel killing Iranian scientists? According to the memorandum revealed by General Clark, you clearly have Iran in your sights as you continue to charge Iran with developing nuclear weapons despite the findings of the IAEA to the contrary. Just as you continue to lie about me, claiming that I am a hater and an anti-Semite, to turn the ear of the people of America and the world from hearing the truth of your wickedness. As you tumble the entire earth into the most devastating war in the history of the world, what contrivance will you bring to the people about me? I am a warner to you, and I am pleading with President Obama, please, don't let them misguide you with their false information that they feed you to make you a pawn of their wicked ideas for domination of that part of the world. America is divided over this. The military leaders are divided over this, and the Congress is divided over how this situation should be handled. America, you're in trouble and you can't see it because your heart is being hardened and your eyes are being blinded from the wicked desire that is already in your heart. This is definitely your desire, but your desire will be your own undoing. If you will not heed, what we are saying to you from Allah, then I guarantee you your destruction 
is now entered across the threshold of the door of America. You cannot say you love the American people. You cannot stand up and say to the American people who love this country and the patriotic members of the armed forces of America that would give their lives to defend democracy and freedom. You cannot stand up and say that this war that you are entering into is for democracy when you've destroyed democracy whenever an election elected somebody that would be against your errand foreign policy objectives and your national interests. You can't say you love the armed forces, the soldiers and sailors of America. Go and look at them with their limbs blown off. Look at the deformed babies from being irradiated from the weapons of war that you have dropped in areas where you have our soldiers trying to serve. Go and look at your soldiers who are coming home to you and cannot fit back into American society, committing suicide at an alarming rate, their wives and their children not being able to recognize them anymore from the horror of their wars. Did you tell the American people why Major Dr. Nidal Malik Hassan, a doctor of psychiatry, killed 14 Americans at Fort Hood? Did you ask and try to find out why he flipped? He now wants to die, but what was he listening to? from our returning soldiers. Was he listening to how they raped Muslim women and killed women and children? Pictures which our government has but refuses to release to the American people so that they may see what war does to the minds of soldiers who are trained to kill. Was Major Dr. Nidal Hassan trying to give them some kind of rationale that would give them mental stability and balance and couldn't take hearing any more of their confessions of what they did and decided to kill those who were being sent to kill Muslims? Oh, the scriptures have already recorded that in the hearts of the leaders, is a disease and Allah increased the disease because they lie and he leaves them alone in their inordinacy blindly wandering on in the Holy Quran chapter 6 the 110th verse and we turn their hearts and their sights even as they did not believe in it the first time and we leave them in their inordinacy blindly wandering on in the seventh chapter, the 186th verse, whomsoever Allah leaves in error, there's no guide for him, and he leaves them alone in their inordinacy, blindly wandering on. I live in this country. This is my country. And as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to his followers, wherever he, meaning myself, tells you to go, go. And wherever he tells you to stay from, stay from. That's not just advice for his followers. That's advice for you, Mr. President. I'm asking you to stay away from that war that you are treading heavily into. But I believe you're already determined to do it. So the consequences of your rejection is blindness and you are wandering on, failing to come under the orders of Allah's divine guidance and instruction. Let's look in the Bible for a moment. In the third chapter of Joel, the second verse, it reads, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. 
Then in the ninth verse of that same chapter, Joel says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. And let the weak say, I am strong. Well, America, you're out ahead of everybody. Planning wars and manufacturing new and more deadly weapons. While the people of America continue to increase in suffering from unemployment, from poverty and want, and from a falling dollar. While at the same time, you're increasing military spending. Look at your projected future, America. Look at this chart that shows that 57% of the proposed discretionary spending for your budget of 2014 is for the military, while only 6% is earmarked for education and only 1% is earmarked for food and agriculture. Is that why here in Chicago and all over the country schools are closing and only the military or jail is the hope for our youth? A warning to our world of Islam. I know my time has come to an end, but I am extending the time a few more minutes that I might finish this timely subject. A warning to our world of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters of the Islamic world, what you are doing under the guidance of America and Europe will cause the whole Middle East to be destroyed and possibly lead to the bombing of our holy city of Mecca. Whether you know it or not, the rightful place for the righteous will be bathed in blood as a purifying agent for the Mahdi and the Messiah to bring the real people of God back to their proper and rightful place in Mecca, in Medina, and the whole Muslim world. Last week when I talked about how certain countries in the Muslim world were being used and how the Middle East is going to go up in flames, but if that happens, the whole Islamic world will come against America. Let me say that that whole area of Palestine and Egypt and Syria, the parts that the Jewish people call Greater Israel or Eretz Israel. That does not belong to you. Unfortunately, you will die there. But your blood and the Palestinian blood and Arab blood and the blood of others will purify that area for the real owners of the kingdom of God. The area we are referring to extends from the Nile River in Egypt to the Euphrates River in today's Iraq. It covers all or parts of today's Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Jordan, Palestine, Syria, and Lebanon, and we will be returning to our place, but it will be cleansed before we get there by the work that Allah is doing and permitting others to do. The promised land, I've been there. I've seen the promised land. And by Allah's grace, I will get there with you. Why did Prophet Muhammad say three generations after him would no longer be of him? What did Allah show him? 
Why did Prophet Muhammad say that he heard the footsteps of Bilal going into paradise before his own? What did Allah show him? Are you really deserving to be masters over the sacred house? Did you think that if you rebelled against Allah, that you were going to stay there forever? Allah promises that he will remove all disbelievers and hypocrites from the sacred lands so that the real Messiah and the real Mahdi and the real people of God will return to the root of civilization for a brand new beginning for humanity and a brand new beginning of a new world of Islam. And this is why you are kissing a black stone. Because it is not you who you are kissing. The real owners of that land will one day be coming home. And Allah says he will take the kingdom from whom he pleases and he will give it to whom he pleases. This is the promise of Allah. In the second surah, verse 212, it reads, the life of this world is made to seem fair to those who disbelieve and they mock those who believe. And those who keep their duty will be above them on the day of resurrection and Allah gives to whom he pleases without measure. And that day of resurrection is now. I read a hadith. I, I don't know if it's a true hadith. I know it's not considered a hadith kutsi, but it struck me while I was in Arabia when I read it. It said, quote, one day a Negro will come at the head of 10,000 and he will destroy the Kaaba. I asked myself, why would anyone destroy this most ancient of houses of worship for the one true God? And the deeper I thought, I said it could be because that ancient house is a sign of something greater than itself. And when the sign has been fulfilled, then the sign need not be anymore. I read another hadith of the Prophet Muhammad and it said to his followers, even if the person coming, his skin is like soot and his hair like dried raisin, if he comes with the wisdom of God verifying what is with you, then you should follow him. Well, judgment starts first in the house of God. So the holy land as we speak is under divine judgment. And so, nation of Islam, are we. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote of the nation of Islam in 1957. He said, quote, at the present time, the nation of Islam is honeycombed with these rotten characters, disbelievers and hypocrites, people who say that they believe, but they are only there to destroy the nation of Islam as it was in 57. It is in 2000. 13, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said then to his followers, be patient, for Allah promised that he will weed out his own kingdom in his own good time. So the nation of Islam in the West, the weeding has now begun. 
In the fifth surah, the 67th verse, O messenger, deliver that which has been revealed to thee from thy Lord, and if thou do it not, thou hast not delivered his message, and Allah will protect you from men. Surely Allah guides not the disbelieving people. I am delivering that message, and I fear not for Allah promises. If that message is delivered, surely he will protect us from men. So to Mecca and to us, remember the words of Allah that he would bring someone else in our place that would be humble toward the believer and mighty against the disbeliever. Is that verse referring to those presently in power in Arabia and in the Muslim world? Or is this referring to others that Allah is preparing to take their place? And to those in the nation of Islam, in positions of leadership, is this referring to you? Is Allah preparing someone to take your place? In the fifth surah, the 54th verse, it reads, O oh, you who believe, should any one of you turn back from his religion, then Allah will bring a people whom he loves and who love him, humble toward the believers, mighty against the disbelievers, striving hard in Allah's way and not fearing the censure of any censurer. This is Allah's grace. He gives it to whom he pleases. And Allah is ample giving. You may see this as a cause to rise up against this little nation of Islam in the West. Some of you even say that we are not real Muslims. Allah knows best who the real Muslims are. And he will judge between us. So wait, for we too are waiting soon we all shall see last week as we ended i asked who made the promise and where is the land that land starts right here in america but it ends right there in the holy land eretz israel is not for you present israelis it is for us, the true children of Israel. So Allah is going to use your blood to purify that area of the world for the Messiah to come back and bring back with him the people of God's choice. For the Holy Land, Mecca in particular, will be the headquarters of the Mahdi and the Messiah. In our lessons, the best part is in Arabia at the holy city of Mecca, and the best part is for the best nation. In the Holy Quran, the third chapter, the 110th verse, it reads, you are the best nation raised up for men. You enjoin good and forbid evil and you believe in Allah. And if the people of the book had believed, it would have been better for them. Some of them are believers, but most of them are transgressors. Well, the best nation belongs on the best part of the planet Earth. Are you having gay parades in the Holy Land? Liars and thieves? Does apartheid exist in the Holy Land? And you dare to think you are the real people of God? So my dear President Obama, I warn you in the name of Allah, listening to liars and thieves and murderers, if you go along with them, 
you will be stained with the blood of all those that are dying from a lying mischief maker and blood shedder. As a young man, they don't want you to have any influence. So they are gradually destroying you. Those that put you in office don't want you ever to be helpful to your people and others after your four years in your second term is up. So because of the consequences of your involvement, while at the same time America is being ravaged with fire and water, heat and hail and sleet and snow and rain and hurricanes and tornadoes and soon great earthquakes and other disasters of all kinds, I pray that Almighty God Allah, in the name of his Messiah, that you will listen and heed these warnings. So I thank you from the depth of my heart for listening. This was a hard lecture for me to give. But Allah laid it on my heart. And I give it to you to do with it and me as you please. So thank you for listening. And may Allah bless us all with the light of understanding as I greet you in peace, as I hope for Allah's peace, as I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends, tell your family. Log on to NOI.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan, hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com.